Hi YouTube. It's the last day of summer for the kids. They go back to school tomorrow. And uh, <clears throat> there's some pretty long faces in the house today. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just shocked at how fast the summer goes by. I, I just can't even believe it. And uh, I'm also f just shocked at how fast they grow up. I mean, I, I know I'm I know this is nothing new, but it's just it just staggers my my mind. You know, you wonder where the time goes um, sometimes. But uh, it's going to free up some time for me. So there's some ex this not exciting videos. There, there's some videos I'm excited to do. Uh, there's one discussion that I've been meaning to have. Uh, is silver a really a gift and good, or um, are people just really bad at trading? You know, um, I, I've heard silver called a gift and good many times, and it's that's actually an economic anomaly that I've always been um, kind of I was well not always fascinated by I was fascinated by it when I was taking economics and uh, I'm really curious um, what you guys think about that uh, especially some of the guys that are, are big on textbook economics um, I know where I stand on it but uh, I'm curious where you guys stand also I'd like to catch up on the uh, closer look series uh, you know I'm always excited to look at these and uh, at the, some of the better bullion or semi numismatic plays, uh, looking at the designs, you know, people talk about their favorites, uh, looking at the mintages, the uh, secondary market performance. Uh, you know, I really like looking at the secondary market performance of some of these issues. It's just, it's something that fascinates me, and um, trying to think about what will be popular down the road is always fun for me. Um, so, also a couple of uh, non silver videos. Uh, Yep. Oh, I, I hear you groaning already. <laughs> but uh, there's one I've been meaning to do. Um, I've been meaning to do a video on breaking the cycle of poverty and violence. You know, especially with the economy being what it is and p with people struggling the way that they are. If, they've ha if they had a rough childhood, it only exacerbates things. And, you know, um, you know, people tend to take out their frustrations on their kids um, and, and the worst part is, like a video like that, I'll be preaching to the choir pretty much, you know, um, and I know that uh, the people that probably need to hear it wouldn't be watching a video like that on my channel, but you know, whatever, it's, it's a discussion I'd like to have. Um, I've been meaning to have it for a while, and listening to uh, Silver New Jack in a recent video that he did really makes me want to do it even more. And, and I realize that anything that I say from personal experience will just pale in, in comparison to, uh, you know, what he went through as a young man. I, I realize that. And, uh, it, but it's, it's a discussion that I want to have. And, uh, and I, I want to kind of, um, I, I want to relate it to some of the things that he talked about in his video. So, so there's that. Silver New Jack is a good dude. So, so, uh, you know, may you live in interesting times, you know, it's funny watching the fear premium come back to gold and silver. Um, you know, earlier this year when gold and silver were pummeled, um, before that, there was a high correlation for silver and gold as a risk asset um, with the stock market. You know, uh, the QE money was basically finding its way into any asset that, that was considered a risk asset, which was always funny because silver and gold were always considered an alternative investment to the stock market. So there was always kind of an inverse relationship between the market and gold and silver. You know, if the market did well, money flowed out of gold and silver. If the market was doing poorly, money flowed into gold and silver. You know, there was always that fear premium. Well, that correlation was broken in a big way late spring, early fall. And that really was part of the absolute drubbing that gold and silver both took um, you know, that, that huge sell-off that they had, and it did a lot of technical damage to the charts, too. I mean, when you have a sell-off that large, it's just very destructive to the charts and, and very hard to uh, to use um, technical data to see, you know, where we're going next kind of thing, right? And it's also funny, too, that have you noticed that, that when silver was at 1850 or so, or I, I know that that was a low, uh, say, let's call it 19. When silver was at 19, Everybody and their brother was calling for five or six dollars silver. I mean, they were literally calling for the the entire, you know, PM market to just get uh, destroyed. You know, gold down to eight hundred, uh, silver down to six or seven, and you know, a nice strong move up, and suddenly everything changes. You know, um, it's just human nature. It just is, and and that's why the guys that are really good at 
um, being a contrarian to how most people think usually do the best in trading. Um, you know, just just by by investing in a contrarian way, going against the crowds, because boy, everybody, even the, some of the better traders were saying, were saying, and it, it just sounded absurd. You know, from somebody that is just basically taking a step back and recognizing that, you know, the price of silver today isn't changing a thing. I'm not selling anything, and I'm not buying anything right now. So it's just watching it, and I guess uh, watching the. Um, you know the, the the paper value of my my stack going up. I guess I mean that's that's just the way the way that it is. Um, one thing that I'm finding very interesting though is silver hasn't gone well. It's gone up quite a bit, but just in the last couple of days, it has only gone up. I mean I don't know exactly a dollar. Um, so what is that like four or five percent? Um, and yet some of the secondary market issues that I've been tracking have had really big moves up, you know, so that's just something that uh, I'm kind of keeping an eye on because there was a few things that I was look at, looking at booking a profit on and uh, flipping and, and getting more ounces. And I was just really surprised at how strong the, uh, the eBay sales were lately for these issues. So yeah, I mean, once again, I, I guess this will go to the, to the giving good discussion, but with silver being so strong, people are definitely uh, running to the secondary market to uh, to buy some of these issues, you know maybe maybe there's going to be a uh, maybe I'll take advantage of that around Christmas. I don't know, but the the thing is to me, a fear premium is basically BS to me. <laughs> I mean, it was BS when it was when it was getting destroyed because suddenly things were better. Using air quotes, my favorite thing, um, because things weren't getting better. Things weren't getting better. Um, and we all knew that. There was nothing in the economy that was passing the smell test to us. We, we've talked about this a bunch. So to suddenly say that, you know, to, to, uh, to sound the all clear bell didn't make sense. And just like now, okay, we send a few aircraft carriers over to Syria. First of all, I'm getting kind of weary of uh, all these little skirmishes and battles and wars that we're trying to fight, you know, being the world's policeman. But... I guess that's another uh, topic for another day. I just, I, I, I guess I'm just done with that whole thing. But um, it's going to happen. So here we go. Uh, crude oil rocking it, rocketing up. You know, uh, is Syria a big oil exporter? No. It's just, just any excuse they can get to drive the price up, they'll do it. You know, oh, it's instability in the Middle East. Well, wait a minute. I thought uh, that we were a net oil exporter now. Well, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I know global market, everything else, but um, but now watching that fear premium come in. So do you buy that? Do you suddenly, you know, put? Do you rush out and make a large silver purchase now based on aircraft carriers going to Syria? I, pff, I don't. I mean, that's not why I would be buying here. I would be buying if it was time for my buy, but. I would probably hold off. But uh, you know what? Then again, I said that uh, you know. <laughs> 75 cents ago. So uh, you just never know. Um, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm curious what your guys' take is on the fear premium coming back to silver and gold. You know, the debt ceiling debate, you're going to be hearing about that ad nauseum over the next six weeks or so. And, you know, this whole mess in Syria. I'm really excited, not excited, I'm really curious to see how this is going to play out. Um, you know, hopefully. Hopefully, we're able to keep our relationship with Russia where it is. I, I just don't need to see Syria uh, as a catalyst for something bigger. I just, I just hope not. Hopefully, this is uh, contained. All right, here we go. Back into ramble mode. But uh, tell me what you think about the fear premium coming back to the precious metals.